This podcast is part of the Deluxe Edition Network. To find other great shows on the network, head over to deluxeeditionnetwork.com. That's deluxeeditionnetwork.com. Coffee, coffee, coffee fitness unicorn. Coffee, coffee, coffee fitness unicorn. Hello, hello, hello. It's me, Coffee Fitness Unicorn, your pocket DJ, and you're listening to Coffee Chats Podcast, a show where storytelling and coffee hang out. Today's special guest is F.R. Diaz, author of The Effects of Her Nerium. In this episode, we chat about her debut novel, true crime podcasts, and being a fiery, passionate Latina. Thank you for listening. Go forth and be magical. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you. Hello. Uh, I'm happy to be here. It's good to have you. So you are author of the book, The Effects of Hernerium. Am I saying that correctly? Yes, ma'am. You are. You are. Uh, I'm a new author. Uh, My debut novel is called The Effects of Hernerium, as you just heard, which is a crime fiction psychological thriller with a twist of graphic and gruesome details of gore and horror. Yes. And there were some scenes and and I actually love that you put a trigger warning in the very beginning. Um, So I opened the book and I was like, well, here we go. It's going to get gruesome. I'm ready. Let's do this. So, uh, so why don't you go ahead and um, tell us a little bit about the book and then uh, we'll go ahead and chat and I'll ask you some questions about the book and your main character because I really would like to tap into your main character. Awesome. Awesome. So yeah, uh, my book, uh, you know, it will take you on a wild ride of twists and turns, sadness and anger, but it will ultimately uh, put you in the shoes of my main character, which is Lilith Simmons, who turns into the most notorious serial killer in the quiet yet deadly deep woods of Kentucky. You will experience her pain and understand her thirst for justice and revenge while two detectives try and stop her murderous path only to discover that there's even a deeper meaning behind all of it. Uh, So let's go ahead. And um, I know they can't, the the listeners can't see this, but your tattoo is fresh. Is it not? Like that is gorgeous. The beautiful flowers. Will you describe your, your tattoo for us, please? So my tattoo is actually the cover of my book. It's the uh, uh, the oleander flower, um, which is, you know, in between two hibiscus flowers, which represents something in the book that I can't quite. uh, (laughs) We won't go there. No spoilers. No spoilers. (laughs) Yep. Yep. Uh, So that is really cool. And uh, so I follow you on Instagram. So that's how we we got to, to know each other. And so um, I recognized your tattoo instantly from the book cover. And I was like, oh, that's so sick. That's like, it's, and it's beautiful. Like it's even more beautiful to like see it with the, with the bright colors and the red and how you have the splatter and everything. That's just awesome. Thank you. Yeah. I wanted to do it when I got um, to sell a hundred copies, but uh, I sold just a little bit over 50. I'm just like, that's a pretty big score for me, you know, as an independent author, uh, yeah. I did everything myself, you know, I didn't, I didn't really have any help. I just, I, I'm really spontaneous. Sometimes I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to write a book. And then I, you know, I just, then I just do it. And I just, you know, my mom's always like, okay, honey, like she just goes along with whatever <laughs> weird adventure I want to go on. And I'm just like, she supports you, you know, that's, that's huge. Like having someone support you, especially writing a book. This is, and I mean, like you said, you did everything by yourself. Yes. And so, um, and so let's go ahead and talk about the, the, te- so you chose different colored fonts, different style fonts. So your mm-hmm. book in itself is actually um, very fresh, 
red and black ink. Yes. You have flowers in between various sections. You you also have, um, there is one section that actually has um, multicolor, and I'll just leave it at that. Yes. Uh, so it's it's more than just red and black. And then also you did the um you did the card that yes. has the QR code on it as well. So was yes. that an idea you came up with? Yeah, that was definitely an idea I came up with. I said, you know, since I'm an independent author, I should definitely try to put myself out there with people face to face that might not might not be able to find me on social medias. Um, so I'm just like, you know what, I'm going to make these business cards and hand them out wherever, uh, I'm a postal carrier. So some, some of my customers are like, oh my God, you, you wrote a book. And I'm just like, yeah, you know, here's the, the card, but remember to, to read the disclaimer, please, for the love of God, read the disclaimer. (laughs) Yeah. Uh, so let's go ahead and talk, talk about that. Um, so you, you have the trigger warning Yes. and I'm glad that you did. Uh, and so I knew it was going to be, you know, and, and actually, no, let's go back. Did you always know you wanted to write a book? Was that something that was just always in you or was that some, some new thing that came about? Well, no, I, I didn't know that I always wanted to write a book. I do have a very vivid imagination. Um, the way this specific book came to mind was, Actually, just working one, I listen to a ton of true crime podcasts, okay? That is my jam. Uh, I listen to, is it okay if I mention a few of them? Yeah, I was going to say, what are your favorites? My favorites is True Crime Obsessed, Crime Junkie, Obsessed with Disappeared, Wicked Deeds Podcast, Anatomy of Murder, and Crime Beat. Crime Beat is actually very interesting because Crime Beat is, is in Canada. And it's a journalist, and she goes into some some details that that she also needs to say a disclaimer in the front of her podcast. Um, but yeah, so I listened to a whole bunch of true crime podcasts. And one day I'm just, I was infuriated by listening to the victims, you know, mm-hmm. um, I would listen to the parents sob over their missing child and daughter, uh, son, whatever it might be, or, y- you know, uh, it, Whenever I listen to those things, it really got to me. And one day I, I'm just like, oh man, if there was this psychotic person that would just go around and, and take off all of these bad people, but in a really twisted, like Saw movie way, I'm just like, that would be totally cool. I would watch that movie. And I'm like, I'm going to call my best friend and talk about it. <laughs> nice. So I talked to my best friend and my best friend's like, man, you should write a book. And I'm like, I should write a book. So <laughs> that's where that all came up. And uh, I came home and I told my girl, my significant other, I'm just like, hey, so I listened to this true crime podcast. This is me introducing the book, but not introducing the book. Okay. So I'm just like, so this happened in the true crime podcast. Somebody murdered this bad person in this way. And my girl's like, oh my God, are you serious? And I'm like, no, but that's an idea for my book. Doesn't it sound cool? And she's like, yeah, it sounds cool. And I'm like, okay, that I'm doing this. <laughs> so cool. That is so cool. And also it's, so it's beautiful and messed up. And by that it's, it's beautiful because you do have your, your character who, uh, and again, I don't, we're, we're not going to spoil anything, but it's, it's beautiful because you are wanting to be that voice yes. of the voiceless. And what's really cool is at the end of your book, you Mm -hmm. also give, um, you get, you, you do your, um, statistics and I was not expecting that. So on your final author notes, you have all of the links, um, especially in the Doe network, that's actually an awesome project. Um, so like, so I'm reading your book and, and, you know, you you take me into this journey and, and I'm, I'm right there and I'm just like yeah this is awesome and then you add that extra layer like the of emotion yeah and I was like okay she just killed me I was like she just I was like oh because you know the right like fiction you're like it's fiction you can go with it you have the emotions but you don't have the attachment the sympathy and the empathy and then you threw that in there 
And I literally, I put the book down and I just was like, I was like, damn. Like, <laughs> Thank you. I was like, whoo, I had to take like a deep breath. Cause that that's, that's real life. It's true. That's real life. Absolutely. Absolutely. That, so that was, back of, go ahead. Sorry. Yeah. No, to tell the listeners in the back of the book that I have the, the statistics of, um, you know, missing people per state. Uh, I give out the antipredatorproject.org. Uh, I give out that information, donetwork.com, missingkids.org, nameus.nij.ojp.gov, which is a website to help, uh, ide- un- you know, identify the, the unidentifiable um, or donate to the cause. Have you noticed how Coffee Fueled Stories doesn't have any ads? That's because I work tirelessly to keep this show alive. After three years on my own, I've decided I need to ask for your help. I've never asked anyone to subscribe. I've never asked anyone to leave a review. I've never asked anyone to rate the show. And I've never asked anyone to pay to listen. There are a few ways you can help support the show. I've created a Patreon page, Coffee Fueled Stories, and a subscription section on my podcast website. It's simple to support and help me keep my dream alive. Just click the link in the show notes to set up your paid subscription option. It's that easy. Thank you for your support. Yeah, like that's, um, I think so, you know, it's a work of fiction and you say Mm. it's a work of fiction, but it is based on real life events Absolutely. people who have you know gone been taken gone exactly. exactly and so that's what i'm saying like you and and that was so different most books don't have that extra layer of it's fiction yeah. we're going to be told a story but you that it, it was like that ultimate hey just remember this shit does really happen exactly exactly you know? absolutely and I was so, like that's impressive for a for a first time author like you did things so so and I don't know is it okay if I ask how old you are yeah so I'm 33 <laughs> okay the, the reason I asked that is because you're in my opinion like I, I think you're you're very young and you're starting out with something so brilliant in the sense like I said that you added that extra layer so even though it's a work of fiction and it is gory and it is graphic and 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 it's it's heavy you also let people know hey there's some real shit that that's out there and it happens and 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 so you know it's not to be taken lightly like so exactly you know what I mean like that's what I'm saying like there you you gave that extra layer and I was like holy crap I was like she's so young and yet she just (laughs) like threw that out there and just like like kind of like you 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 get you get punched but in a good way you know what yeah. I mean you, you see well my my whole goal was really that um because when I'm listening to these true crime podcasts I, I it really gets to me like it, it it hits it hits me you know when I hear the victims and I'm just like that has to be so horrible to lose someone and then not know anything about them for years, for, for, for years that you assume they're dead. And then finally you either find their corpse or something, or sometimes these cases, like the, the, the unidentifiable, the dough network, those are people that haven't been able to be identified. They don't know who these people are. And these are probably people that, that they have family members still looking for them to, yeah. to this day, you know? Yeah. So I was just like, you know what, I'm going to write this book and I'm going to, it's going to be very entertaining, heartbreaking. And I want to put my readers in the perspective of somebody that's losing all of these people, that's getting their life torn apart. I want you to step into my main character's uh, footsteps and be like, man, I would totally, I am totally with her. Like I want her to do this and I want her to do that. But at the same time be like, but in real life, you can't really do those things. So it's kind of like, I'm giving you that that wants like what you want to do in real life to these bad people you just you kind of release it while you're reading the book because you're just like yeah that's what's up that's justice and you're like <laughs> so you're just going along for the ride and then at the end just like you're you, you just realize all the statistics and you're you you just sit there and you're like that's so sad like this is real you know 
though the story is fake it happens in real life like i said for for being such a young author and for like just coming up with the idea you know of that here's this graphic story here here are these people that that i'm i you're you know you're saying i'm going to do this but i'm also going to give again i'm going to give a voice to the voiceless you know exactly. and that is so um i was not expecting that at the end of the book you know again without any spoilers i was you know right there and then um i was like oh shoot oh and then i was like oh wow that's heavy <laughs> i was like that is heavy but and and that's the beauty of horror right so you yes. know when we read horror um and and brandy and i talk about this all the time but the whole beauty of horror and and most people don't realize this you know they just think horror, horror is gore and it's violent but at the base level of horror the philosophical aspect of horror is it's justice it's yes. it's justice and it's Absolutely. cathartic and it allows yeah. us to get the justice that we we can't and we're like we can't do the things that these books do <laughs> exactly. but at the same time we're like it's like dexter right like we love dexter right who 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 has you're familiar with dexter right i am i'm okay. very familiar with dexter yes <laughs> right so we love dexter because of what he does he has a code he lives within a system he takes out bad guys like and we love that that's why we watch it because we're like, who is he going to take now? You know, like, what's he going to do next? We live vicariously through these characters who are doing yeah. these things that we know we can't. Exactly. <laughs> well, you can. <laughs> there are re- repercussions. Right, and, exactly. And if, if we did these things, you and I wouldn't be having this talk right now. Absolutely. <laughs> right. But that's exactly the reason. Like, you know, you go into the adventure of the book and you're like, man, I wish I could. I could do something like this, but then at the end, I'm just like, well, if you actually wanted to help, here's these websites where you can donate, you know, to help find, you know, or identify, give the name, uh, you know, the nameless a name and so on and so forth. (laughs) Absolutely. Do you, so we, when we were DMing, we talked about having our Latina uh, connection. And one of the things that I, I remember my mom saying was and she always said this and I can't remember the word so I'm going to slaughter it but it's it's a concept of um and she said it in Spanish so you might be more familiar with the term than me but basically she always called me a I would fight for those who can't fight for themselves and it was some sort of like advocate there was like a, there's actually like a, a term for it and because she came from Argentina, so there was a lot of people that were, there's a lot of bad things that happened. So talk about missing people and people that were taken in the middle of the night, um, yeah. very bad things. And they had a saying, and I'll have to look it up. So a- after, after the show, um, I'll go ahead and look it up and I'll, I'll DM you, but there's a term, and I don't know if your mom might be familiar with it as well, or you, but it's about giving the voiceless a voice and there's a, a specific Spanish term for that yeah I don't know which that what term that would be all right I'll, I'll have to look that up I'll have to look that up yeah. and, and I wish I would have written that down I wish I would have written that down so bad because I'm I sure some family that. members are, are going to be listening to this and be like oh I know but I'm sorry I'm sorry guys I don't I don't know <laughs> no worries I was gonna say my aunt my aunt and uncle they they listen so uh I'll, I'll follow up with them I'll be like hey what was that since we're talking about Latina things, the character's uh, background is, um, is that your background? Are you? Yes. Uh, Puerto Rican. Yes, yes. absolutely. So, okay. you know, I say, th- I give you uh, uh, in the book, I give you two, two different states, um, which is uh, Puerto Rico, where everything starts. And I give you uh, Kentucky, which is where everything ends. <laughs> and it's so funny because you explain. So when, when you start out reading you are going and, and so you, ex, you you talk about Kentucky like where we start out with with the action like you take yes. us right into the action which That's is awesome intro. yes yes and it's so funny because literally the first thing first thing I wrote why Kentucky and then <laughs> look, it's right here and then I crossed it out because look I crossed it out because you explain why Kentucky <laughs> okay <laughs> 
I was like, why the hell is this taking place in Kentucky? <laughs> Well, you know, you they say write what you know. So I was actually in Kentucky for uh, seven seven years, I think it was. Um, and I don't know. I found Kentucky to be so beautiful and haunting at the same time. Oh, you wow. know, I worked down there at at the with the post office, and I used to be a sub substitute down there. So Christmas time came around, and it was always very dark when when we had to go out and do these package deliveries. And sometimes these roads were exactly like how I described them in the book, you know, dark with no street lights. There was no roads. There was no, you know, and, and it, you know, at nighttime, it is terrifying. And I used to have all of these vivid imaginations of movies that I would make in my head, like, oh man, you know, what kind of a horror movie would be great here. Or like, I would go through a road and be like, this might be the road of Jeepers Creepers. Am I wrong? You know? (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> totally and totally so I really got the inspiration because the land in the day is absolutely beautiful the city gorgeous uh but at nighttime that is that is a unique unique place <laughs> for sure and, and like <laughs> and, and when you take us right into the action we're you know we're right there and uh and then of course obviously you explain why we ended up in Kentucky but uh at, at first um uh, it, it was just kind of like the first, I was like, yeah, uh, so, yeah. so well, now the, I, well, you can thank the military for that, for, for right? sending me over there. <laughs> right. It, it's, and I love that you say that because, um, I was in Arkansas and when I got my orders for Arkansas, I was like, who the hell did I piss off? Who? Why? <laughs> I'm like, huh? how, how am I ending up in Arkansas? Like what the hell? But, and, and so Arkansas had the same kind of beautifulness during the day you would drive through the pine trees and it was just beautiful and you could smell it yeah like the nature like you could smell nature yeah nature yeah you can definitely smell it but at night uh -uh. Uh -uh. I would not be in those (laughs) I would I would not be driving those roads especially because I had my little red sports car with my California plates and my my white platinum hair like this yeah and my tattoo on my arm and so and so every time I rolled up to the gas station like everybody just knew you ain't from here are you <laughs> and I was like no the hell not? I right <laughs> and, and so yeah so no I did not travel by myself during the day that's for sure yeah or, I mean no. during the night sorry during the night I did not do during that the during yeah so I definitely definitely get it <laughs> yes so, don't get me wrong. I don't know if I have any Kentucky listeners. I absolutely love Kentucky. I want to visit again one day because I did work down there in the city as well and uh, play in the uh, the bar that I mentioned in the book. Yes. Uh, <laughs> c- can we talk about the Easter egg? Is it is it okay to talk about the Easter <laughs> yes, egg? Yes, 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 yes. It, it's so funny because um, I didn't know you were going to have an Easter egg. Um, yeah. and, and that's kind of like a new concept. I didn't... Um, I wasn't expecting that. And so the only reason I knew about the, uh, the Easter egg was because we, you know, DM'd about that. So do you, do you want to spill the beans on that or, or should we keep that? <laughs> yeah, no, no, no. Uh, so in the book, in chapter 18, for those of you that might uh, read the book here in the future, um, I placed myself in the book like Stan Lee would in his Marvel movies. I just kind of popped in for a second Back in 2012 to 2016, I think it was, I was a drag king. In case you guys don't know what that is, it's the opposite of a drag queen. So I am a woman that dressed up like a man and uh, my name was Chaos. So I popped myself in there in the book. Uh, My main character actually runs into me uh, when they go to the club and my main character actually makes makes fun of me. (laughs) That's so crazy. I, I love that you did that. That is like so cool. I, I, I like I said, I, I really wasn't expecting that. Um, yeah, my mom liked that part. She, she, when she was reading it, she actually texted me and she was just like, LOL, chaos, the drag king poppy. I'm loving this chapter. <laughs> That's so, I've always been very artistic. Um, this is my first book that I've actually uh, did. Um, everything else before that was just different types of art like being a drag king was a different type of art you know getting on stage and doing all the makeup and and the uh making it seem like I I look like a man uh 
you know, it would it, it was it was a lot of fun. Um, a lot of people would get very confused, ask me if I was a trans man or something like that. And I would just be like, oh, no, thank you. But that that, you know, it's a compliment because it lets me know that my makeup is is working here. <laughs> So, uh, and before that, uh, I, I was in art school. So mainly all of my stuff is just really, uh, you know, based around art, art stuff like drawing and uh, photography and digital art, as you saw on my Instagram page. Oh my God, your Instagram page is freaking goals, dude. Like <laughs> every day it's like a mini movie and it's, it's <laughs> like, I, I was going to ask you about that. Um, so it, it, like, do you know do you have ideas how do you come up with your Instagram page it's because it's freaking uh, brilliant it's freaking brilliant <laughs> well for anyone that wants to check it out um it's uh f dot r dot d s underscore a dot morbid dot writer um if you need to hear that again just click the 15 second rewind <laughs> and, and I'll, but, uh, I'll- I'll add your Instagram uh, into the, to the message, to the detail of the podcast notes for sure. Oh, awesome. awesome. They, they need uh, to know so where yeah. you are. <laughs> no, my, my post, I don't know. Anytime that I have an idea for like a short story, I try to base the short story around some type of creepy picture I might find on, on Instagram or, or, you know, Google or whatever. If I find a picture on Instagram, I'm just like, wow, I can really create a super creepy story with this and put some uh effects with music and and smokes and all that kind of stuff um i'll ask the instagrammer if they're okay with me sharing their stuff and i'll uh you know tag them and whatever say thank you um but most most of them i just find on on the internet like on google or whatever like if i if i have an idea for a, a short story or if i'm trying to promote my book itself you know um i'll think about scenes that might be in the book and try to integrate it uh, like I take some of the scenes from Saul from like, you know, uh, clips from Saul, I'll take it and, uh, I'll cut it in a way where it doesn't show too much of it's the movie saw, but it's kind of like a glimpse into my book type of way. Uh, so that's kind of where I get my ideas from. <laughs> like I said, they're, it's, they're freaking brilliant. I, I, every day it, 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 you know, you show up in my feed and I'm like, Oh, I was like, what are we going to see today? <laughs> <laughs> uh so uh let's let's talk about uh you so Lilith Lilith Simmons my main character yeah yes. and it's funny because I wrote down Lilith and I was like name intentional question mark and then on page yes, 163 absolutely. once I'm like it's so funny I'm telling you my notes I write down the question and I'm like and she answered it yes. and before we even I was like okay, I'm just going to be patient. I'm just, and then sure enough on page 163, I got my answer. So, uh, and, and then, um, on international women's day, is it okay if, if we talk about Lilith yes, and your international absolutely. women's yeah. day? Oh my yeah. God. I was dying. Like, it's funny. It's hilarious and, and not, you know what I mean? Like, yes. Yeah. At the same time. Yeah. So they're just like, oh, that's sick. And you're like, oh, I get it though, but it's sick. <laughs> totally totally and that's when I was like you need to come up with a graphic novel for this book like you have Definitely. so much creativity so yeah so I was gonna say if, if there's anybody out there who's you know like listening that wants to to work on a project to to you know do a a, a graphic novel I, I think this Definitely. would be like brilliant as a graphic novel you know, I actually thought about it like that. Actually, my best friend was just like, why don't you just draw, um, you know, the torture scene so people can kind of see, you know, like, a, like they would draw like a, like a map, like they would do in the medieval times to draw the map of a torture device or whatever. My, my best friend's like, why don't you do something like that? And I'm just like, oh, I, I don't think I can. I mean, I'm not that confident with my drawing to, to do something like that. And as you know, many of the torture scenes in my book were, very detailed and <laughs> oh. Oh. I actually I would I would so I'm 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 a good and a bad reader so I, I'm going to call myself out but I'm also going to clarify myself to you so the first two scenes I read 100% right there I was like oh and then when the uh, I'll just when the keep, murder there, spree let's just say that yeah I was like 
I had to like prepare myself because for, I, you know, I didn't have to prepare myself. Like when I was, I was like, okay, okay. I'm going for a ride. I'm going for a ride. Oh my God. This is yeah. sick and disgusting. And I like it. <laughs> and, and then the sick and disgusting became even more sick and disgusting and twisted and violent and gory. And then I was like, okay, it's coming up. So I literally had to like, I had to prepare myself. So I was like, she wasn't lying when she said trigger warning. And so I was like, yeah. I'm all, all right, it's going to be violent, it's going to be gory, and it's going to be good. All right, it's all just this. one chapter. And I was like, I cram it. <laughs> oh. I cram it all into one chapter just to disturb you and just, you know, tell yourself, you know what, I'm going to put this book down for now. I did. I'm going to take a breather. <laughs> I did. I did. I, I had to take a breather. I was like, that's why I was like I was a good reader and a bad reader I was like oh I was like I I need to I need to like walk away for a few I was like this was because again I I I didn't I didn't know what I was expecting you know I was like all right she she yeah and and then I was like she was not lying when she said trigger warning I was like oh it's it's because in the first two I am slowly bringing you in there I'm just like I'm Uh slowly creating the monster that she's becoming uh-huh. already when she's in her spree she's already become full monster so you know she's gonna go for it she taunts the police she leaves messages she she leaves a video I, I mean <laughs> and what was so awesome was um because she has the it, 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 hopefully hopefully I don't have to cut this out because I don't think I'm giving anything away um but uh the gloves she has her gloves yeah. Yeah. And, um, and all I kept thinking was, I was like, don't take off your gloves. Like, make sure you, like, I'm right there with her. I was like, make sure you, I was like, you better not leave any DNA. Oh, yeah. I was like, not. don't you dare leave any DNA. Damn it. I'm like, you need to walk away clean and free. <laughs> Is your hair under the hat? Is it under the hat? You know how many times my mom called me and she said, in this chapter, did she still have the neck gator? And I'm just like, uh, yeah, what, what chapter? And she's just like, because I feel like she didn't. And I'm like, no, mom, she, she, it's fine. She's okay. It's a fictional character. <laughs> and she's like, well, I don't want her to get caught yet. And I'm like, it's fine. Just go along with the story. <laughs> and the other, I was like, she better not have any animal fur on her. I was like, because the animal, I was like, she needs to lint roll the shit out of herself. I, again, the I whole time. That too. Yeah. I was like, so again, when we're first and I was like, don't you leave any DNA. <laughs> and then I explained further. I'm just like, giving you the details of how she goes right before and you're like oh okay yeah she's good she's clean she's all right (laughs) I was like oh man so uh again it's it's that uh you know not not necessarily to compare yourself uh to to Dexter but same thing you're like you want to make sure like when he has his kill room with all of his plastic and everything and you want to make sure you're the good guy you're the good guy so if yeah. anyone from law enforcement is listening, I have not committed any murder. Nor I have am I. not. And no, no. every you can check my computer, but it's it's. I guarantee you, it, you'll it'll look like I'm guilty, but I promise you, I'm not. <laughs> right, and I, I'm strictly fanning. I'm a fan girl. I'm this. I'm not planning on anything. Absolutely. This is. I support my authors one hundred percent. Uh, so since we are talking about, uh, Lilith real quick, one of my favorite little things when, when you introduce her as a, as a little girl, she has the light up shoes and she plays cops. I had to, I actually had to describe her. I was just like, what was I like when I was a little girl? And I was like, I used to love those light up shoes and like the show cops and Ninja Turtles. I'm just going to describe her a little bit by my, about me. (laughs) So I was just like, I'm going to dazzle that in there. (laughs) nice and the 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 best part about light up shoes is you do your little dance right you're like oh uh, uh, right and you got the little, oh, you got the little light so up so annoying with those things right i i never got them so i have to live through through you know others who had light up shoes and, and i very much so I, I very much liked your little scene there let's talk about the flower hair pin for rebecca right rebecca had yeah. the flower hair pin Yes. So it was a hibiscus. The, these are those little extra details. Um, so 
like do you read a lot like how did you there were like I said the little light up shoes so there's these little details that you you put in there considering like I said this is your first book <laughs> yes and you have these little details in there that just really kind of you know grab the reader and 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 solidify that you have these awesome characters you you give these characters life being that this is your first book like do you read a lot of books uh, actually um I, the book that kind of turned me towards uh writing this type of book was a uh, uh, sweetheart by chelsea kane do you know that one no i don't know that one that one she um it, it's a uh, gretchen and I forgot what his, what the detective's name is, but Gretchen is her villain. And she described Gretchen to be so gorgeous. She put these beautiful, beautifully haunting details into her writing that really caught my eye. And I'm just like, this is the type of stuff that I like to read. Like, catch my attention with these beautiful details and sprinkle them into the story so that way when I'm further down the story I'm just like oh my god this matches up with the other thing and I'm you know and so with Chelsea Kane she describes her 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 villain that way and she described her the the corpses of of what the detectives would find in such a horrific and beautiful way with these details that I I really did fall in love with it and and really a lot of my book I I did um copy a lot of her writing style when it came to the to the to the corpses and you know those tiny little details like the hibiscus flower for the for her hairpin um I also wanted to give details of locations I wanted you to see what I was seeing in my head, just like Chelsea Kane did in her books of Sweetheart. By the way, Chelsea Kane, if you ever listen to this, I love your books, please, God. <laughs> oh, I'm going to share um, this with her. I'm definitely going to send this to her for sure. <laughs> when I was describing those things, I, I said, you know what? I want to give people a taste of what it would be like to be in these locations at this exact time in, 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 the, in, the, in the world. So when I first bring you 1983, I wanted to bring you 1983, you know? Yeah, there was, you had to do the, the waitresses picking up the lines with the, with the notepad instead of, you know, uh, clicking on, on some digital pad. Um, the window of her car, of her friend's car that they had to hand, you know, wheel down. Um, I wanted to give you all of those beautiful details, the details of the, of the restaurants, of the police station, of of everything, because I wanted you, the reader, to to see what you're reading like a movie, just like I was I was seeing it in my head while I was writing it. Matter of fact, while I was writing it, in some of the horrific, gruesome scenes, I myself had to step back. <laughs> you know, I'm writing and I'm just like, whew, all right, give me a second. I got to get up. And I, you know, I would go and get a breather and then I'd be like, I have to finish that murder somehow. And I'm like, how do I? (laughs) And then sometimes when I would get stuck, I would call my best friend and I would would ask my significant other. I'm like, hey, how, what would you think if we was to murder someone, right? Um, (laughs) What kind, and, and this is a bad person, mind you what would you do you know and I would go into these details with them and and have a little bit of fun but I needed to to try to have that fun with them to be able to not suck myself into the story and be like this is very heavy for me sometimes (laughs) I was there when when you were describing them having a smoke break out in the car in Puerto Rico I was there I could feel the the heat I could feel the sun I, I could smell the air. Like I was in that restaurant. I was yeah. there. You did a great job. Um, the, the characters, I could see the army guys coming in. It, it did. It played like a movie and I could see it. Like I could see the character watching, you know, the dad pull up in his vehicle. I, I could, I could see it. Like you just did a great job describing everything um even with uh so there's a couple of characters so david richards 
and, <laughs> and Claire Abbott. And so I was like, it's her. She did it. So I'm all. Already- <laughs> I love how your mind went to it's her <laughs> she did it uh I was like she's no she not mm-mm. she's not a good person it's her uh, and again I don't know anything what? about her but just the I was like she did it it's it's <laughs> what gave it away was it the the lipstick stained teeth was that what gave it away <laughs> and the cigarette and the way she held it and was just like uh <laughs> Uh huh. Uh huh. And then I was like, oh, okay, she's, it was, it's not her, you know, I was, but like, I was like, she, it's her. Like before, again, the, the, the story isn't even starting, but my brain just, I was like, I want to depend it on her. <laughs> One of the things I try not to do is I try not to create the story because the whole point of me being the reader is you are supposed to tell me the story. So yes. I stopped. <laughs> I was like, okay, she's messing with me and this is good. Um, and so I was like, okay, I'm going to stop taking notes and I'm just going to take a ride. But I, and I always start with like characters because I need to know, it's very important for me to write down characters because I need to understand who our main character. So at first I was like, okay, is Rebecca our main character? And yeah, it's mainly, it should be mainly uh, the detectives and then my main character. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and so like I said, that's why I stopped. I was like, yeah. okay, I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm going to stop. I'm going to stop doing what I'm doing right now. And I was like, because clearly I'm wrong. (laughs) I'm wrong. I'm wrong. And that's why I was like, okay, stop being a bad reader. Just stop. (laughs) The only thing I wrote down were those names. I write, uh, I have um, a psychological thriller. So I was like, okay, so again, this is kind of like take, I was like, okay, it's going to be a psychological thriller. Okay. And so I was like prepping myself (laughs) for it. Right. That's right. Yeah. And then why Kentucky? Um, uh, and then I crossed that out and then, uh, uh, I have little, um, little asterisks because those are the things that I wanted to ask you about. So the flower pin was one, which you already explained about that. I have a question. What is your favorite flower? Because you talk about the oleander and the hibiscus, but I don't want to assume that those are your favorite flowers. So that's why I have the question. What's your favorite flower? orchids yes my grandmother loved orchids and I love orchids too unfortunately I don't know how to keep them alive for too long <laughs> girl I'm right there with I, you I don't have I don't have the green thumb <laughs> I am a black thumb I have killed so many orchids I love orchids <laughs> and I, I, my mom was the green thumb so yeah yeah no uh, my mom is definitely getting into her green thumb and uh, my grandmother was very good with plants and stuff and so was my great-grandmother but I somehow fell off of that tree I don't know (laughs) so I'm gonna ask you this so I suck at taking care of plants but I'm really good at taking care of people so Ah. I I think so at least I'm good at taking care of something yes (laughs) I'm right? good at taking care of my people and right? my dogs. <laughs> See, that's what I'm saying. So I don't have to, I, the way I look at it is I'm like, I can take care of people and I can take care of animals. I don't have to take care of plants. Like someone else can do that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> my girl actually wants to try to, to try to, uh, you know, take care of some plants. Uh, we're going to attempt and hopefully we won't kill any of them. <laughs> <laughs> so you'll appreciate this. We have, um, I, I, I'll, I'll send you a picture of it. We have a little uh, succulent and oh. he, he is in a sugar skull looking um, pot and his oh, name is, cool. is Cafecito. <laughs> okay. His name is Cafecito and, and it's a succulent and we got it when we moved here and he's growing. We haven't killed it yet. So it's a miracle. Oh, that's a win. That's a win right it's there. A, it's a miracle. I think the long... The longest thing we were able to keep was a cactus. So, <laughs> yeah, it's it's in the succulent family. It's a, it's some sort of cactus of some sort. And and just this morning, she's like, "When was the last time you watered cafecito?" And I was like, "I watered him last week. He's fine." <laughs> and you're just like, "It's okay. It's fine. It's not he's dying fine. yet. So you, it's he's, fine. you see it, right? It's still he's kind of green. It's okay." <laughs> And, and it's growing. It's, it's definitely growing. I, I, I should have, I meant to do like a time-lapse of it. Maybe I will. I'll, I'll do a time-lapse uh, to show. I think I took a picture of it when we got it. So I should take a picture of it now. So we, we, like I said, we actually are capable of taking care of this one thing. So 
like I said, it's a miracle that we haven't killed it. Did you know that there is an orchid festival in Santa Barbara? It is like massive. It's massive. What? It's huge. Yeah. Like these are like legit. And these are like people that are like crazy. These are crazy. Oh my God. Can you please write a book about the crazy orchid? People? <laughs> please. Is there any of them that are poisonous? <laughs> mm, they might be. There might be. <laughs> maybe maybe they'll create one Mm. Mm. there's your main character (laughs) and she's not a stripper dancer bartender with bad lipstick (laughs) with with cheap lipstick (laughs) oh my god oh my god this is awesome so uh you know what let's let's go ahead and talk about uh some of the latina uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, I put that in there. <laughs> uh-huh. Uh-huh. Oh, I was trying to go for something universal. I really wanted to put, uh, you know, something slang from Puerto Rico, but I'm just like, I feel like the readers are, and, and if I get Hispanic readers, they're going to be like, what is she trying to say here? But the only people that are going to stand are all the Puerto Ricans. And I'm just like, I can't, I can't put that little thing. So let me try to make this insult a universal type of insult. <laughs> Yeah, that's, I really that's wanted a- to put something like cabron or, or you know, I, I put cabron in there somewhere. You did, yes. Yes, uh, that's in yeah. there. Okay. What, what was the other thing? I don't remember what was the other thing I wanted to, to name him. <laughs> right? So these are some of the sayings. Um, my mom, she was so bad and so good. Um, so we would be eating dinner and the phone would ring and she would tell me how to answer the phone because it was more than likely a, a telemarketer. And so we're, we're sitting there and we're having family dinner and she goes, I want you to answer the phone and I'll wait till you're done drinking. Cause I don't want you to spit it out. Um, oh, go ahead. <laughs> and then she would say, I want you to answer the phone and I want you to say, Inche pelotas. and I was like, what? okay. So I did. did you know what you were saying? No idea. I'm 15, oh, <laughs> I'm 15, you know, little gringa. And my mom says, answer the phone. Don't say hello. Just answer the phone, pick it up. And just say, inche pelotas. Oh and I was like, God. okay. And then the guy, hello, is, mi-, and, you know, and I was like, and I, I'm, I'm like looking at my mom and my mom is like, inche pelotas. And inche pelotas. So I'm, you know, I just keep saying it. Eventually the guy hangs up. And then I was like, mom, what did you just say? What did I just say? And she was like, do you really want to know? And I was like, yeah. And so, of course, maybe I'm slaughtering it, but um, uh, right, it's you inflate my balls, right? Yes. Yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah <laughs> that's, that's how my mom translated it you inflate my balls and I was like all right and so we're just, and we just continue to eat dinner we just <laughs> you know because we we honestly don't know sometimes the things that we get into I, I mean you know <laughs> right so uh so in Argentina they really like to everything is all about male and female genital parts right right, right and so right. uh I learned uh Pelotudo, boludo, sanganote, <laughs> dejame de joder, I think. And again, I apologize. Oh, to stop bothering me. Yeah. Deja de joder. Uh-huh. And then um, uh, dejame en paz, you know, like leave me in peace. Um, so that one I didn't get in trouble. And then um, uh, uh, the, the one that always cracks us up is concha. Just concha. crack because concha, even though it's, you know, a shell, a and shell the, and the bread, right? The uh, 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 pan dulce, concha. They say concha, concha de oro, or porongo de oro. So oh, what the? <laughs> uh huh. So you have a golden. Mm-hmm, oh. Uh huh. So concha. <laughs> to this day, concha still gets my, all of us. We laugh hysterically at concha because it means. Mm-hmm, yeah. So. Mm hmm. Yeah, that's hilarious. Yeah, it's so funny how, you know, uh, even though all these countries, they speak Spanish, we all have our own little uh, things here and there that only us in that little country mm-hmm. understand, like, mm-hmm. you know, Mexico has their own little ways of saying things and then yeah. Puerto Rico and Cuba and Dominican Republic. It's, it's funny because sometimes you'll say something in Spanish to someone else that is speaking Spanish, but then they laugh at something that you said and you're like, did I make a joke? Yeah. Was it funny? 
But, right. And they're like, oh, that word that you said just means this in my country. And I'm like, well, in my country, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> So I, like, what was it? I got I think it was a guy from Argentina I think um I used to work uh, at UPS in a, in a one of those factories and I was talking to him one time and I cussed because in Spanish because something fell on my foot and in Puerto Rico you know Puerto Rico we I cussed and I said Puñeta, you know <laughs> And, and and that to me means, you know, fuck, damn it, you know, whatever. Right. And he started laughing so hard. And I was just like, what's so funny? I hurt, you know, and he's like, oh, in, in my country, puñeta means masturbation. And just, he just kept on laughing. And I'm just like, with this straight face, like, that's not what I meant. Obviously, I'm not going to scream masturbation while something's hitting my foot. <laughs> you know what I meant. It meant, damn it. <laughs> Oh, totally. walk off pissed off to the bathroom <laughs> right oh my god and our family like we are we're like especially when it because they they really mix the spanish and the english and they make my aunt and my uncle they have like made their own language and, and, but in the most crazy way and they will literally put two things together that's English and Spanish and literally nobody else will like understand it oh that's hilarious and, and so they have like created their own language and I was like and I, <laughs> I was like I love my family and again to this day Concha still cracks us up every oh, time man. I go to the grocery store the um, pan dulce and it's all packaged and it says Concha in big letters I take a picture and I send it to my auntie Patty every time. And we do the ha 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 ha. It's not with the J A J A. Uh huh. It's not the H A H A. It's ha 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 ha. The J A J A J A J. Yeah, that's hilarious. With my family, it's kind of different. Like uh, my whole family, is, it, they all speak Spanish. That's the main language is Spanish. But when we're all together, we're we're usually a family reunion down in Florida where my mom lives. Um, and when we go out all together in like this massive bunch, it's like, it's constant laughter. And when we have to stop somewhere to like to a restaurant to eat or something like my, my uncle and my aunt, they're so funny. They, they try to speak in English and, but they know a lot of English, but they always, they're so loud and they make these jokes and. And then the waitress is always, always so awkward and I'll always have to apologize for them. I'm just like, I'm so sorry. They're, it's just, they're just like this. And then everyone's just laughing and I'm over here like trying to be normal. And I'm like, it's, it's fine. It's, everything's fine. <laughs> right? right. And they're just making all of these jokes in English and Spanish. And the waitress is like, are you guys done? And I, I'm looking around and I just, I can't stop laughing with them. I love them to death though. It's so funny. <laughs> right. It's yeah. Like, and especially because I feel like I'm such a, a gringa. So in the seventies, you did, we, they didn't realize that I should have learned both languages at the same time. It would have been more yeah. beneficial, but they didn't know this. We know this now. Yeah. yeah. So at the time, and also my mom was afraid that I would have an accent. So she didn't want me to have an accent. She wanted me again to be very, you know, very gringa. Americanized. Yeah. very Americanized and that's why they came here because they you know they they fled their country because their country had some bad shit happening in it so so I get it um but the best part was I came home from um high school Spanish my first Spanish class and you're gonna appreciate this so I came home and I went hola mama como oh my esta? god <laughs> and my mom goes oi you're hurting my ears. Go upstairs and practice your accent and come down when you speak Spanish. <laughs> and so for two hours, I was, and I was like, okay, how is this supposed to sound? She goes, hola, mama, como esta? Hola, mama, como esta? That's what yeah. you should say to me. Don't hurt my ears. Don't hurt my ears. <laughs> so I went up for two hours and I practiced, hola, mama, como esta? Hola, mama, como esta? <laughs> And finally, I came back down. Oh, hola, mama. Como esta? Oh. <laughs> but the best part was, hola, mama. Como esta? <laughs> oh, man. With me, it was totally different. Uh, I My mom tried to integrate Spanish into me so bad. Um, 
because I, I was born in Puerto Rico, but at one year old, I was brought to the United States. So I was, uh, you know, in the schools here until I was nine. And then once I was nine, my mom, you know, she brought me back to Puerto Rico. And it was so difficult to me to integrate myself within, you know, the schools there in Puerto Rico because I was, I was getting my education here. But while we were over there, my mom tried so hard. She taught me the alphabet in Spanish, the numbers in Spanish. She taught me how to, you know, say my name with the accent in Spanish. Um, and it was, I don't know, my little, my little kid brain was like trying to block it out somehow. And it was very difficult for me to learn how to speak Spanish, I understood a lot of it. Like if my mom was mad and she'd be like, yo, they hire so I, you know, I'd be like, oh, she said, she said, you know, I should stop doing whatever I'm doing. I don't know. <laughs> right. So, but you know, I couldn't say back, you know, uh, speak back to her in Spanish. So I, I got bullied a lot. <laughs> uh, but you know, it, it was a, I, you know, now I have, I have more of an accent in Spanish, but still you hear myself with the rest of my family. I, I'm the gringa. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I know my accent in Spanish is pretty good now because uh, I'm, I'm with my significant other for, for six years now. And she's also Puerto Rican. So, um, you know, I talk mostly Spanish with her. So it's helped out a lot. And my mom noticed and she was just like, oh, thank God your accent is back or blah, blah, blah. And I'm just like, yes, mother. Yes. <laughs> right. Totally. Oh, my God. I, I My mom, like. Oh, she, like she used to embarrass the crap out of me when I was a teenager. Um, but then like, you know, as, as I got older and I started to, you know, what happens is you have the adult child relationship, right? And then you become an adult and then you have to have the adult adult relationship, adult. right? Yes. And, um, so Which is still difficult for me, by the way. Oh my I, God. It's still to this day. Very oh difficult. my God. Totally. My mom like wants to get me drunk and stuff. And I'm just like, no, it's okay. I'm good. <laughs> right. Yeah. And my, my mom used to say like the most inappropriate things. And I'm like, mom, you can't say that. Like, you can't <laughs> say that. <laughs> my whole family, my whole family. Are you guys listening? All of you. <laughs> and I'd be like, mom, like we would be at Barnes and Noble. And I'm like, mom, you can't say that. You can't, because you, she would be speaking in Spanish. Like, you know, she would say like, yeah. I'm not even, I'm not even going to say it. I'll, I'll DM you. But <laughs> she would say something. And I'm like, mom, you can't say that. That is extremely inappropriate. She, that they don't understand what I'm saying. <laughs> like, oh my God. It's like we have the same mother. <laughs> I'm like, sorry, mom. oh my God. I know. I was like, sorry, mom. But what was awesome was I do have these awesome like childhood memories of, uh, and I'll make this really quick because I want to know if your mom is like this too. So my mom would not describe herself like as a, a bruja per se, but like she did have like these mama bear qualities. It was very, very, very mama bear protective over me till, till this day. And I'm, I'm grown. Uh, <laughs> the, when we, me and my significant other, we went to go visit her, um, like a couple of years ago and we were walking around you know on her road it's it's a, a just a wide open space of just farmhouses you know so we were walking around there one morning and we were all just enjoying the view and you know watching the the uh horses and there was a few cows down along the road when we were coming back to the house we heard a rustling in some bushes across the street and my girl, she grabs me and, I, and I'm, I'm trying to grab my mom. I'm like, yo, what, what's that? What's that noise? And my mom didn't look back. She didn't care what we were doing, what was happening. She, her hands were already in fists and she went walking straight to that bush. And I'm like, mom, where are you going? And I'm like, grab, trying to grab her. And she just, she went like this and, and she was like ready to fight with whatever was in there. And it was my stepdad trying to scare us. <laughs> And then she was just like, I could have killed you, blah, 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 blah. And she started, you know, trying to, you know, hit him on the arms and whatever. And then I was just like, oh my God, mom, that could have been some psycho. And you went over there with your fist thinking that you're freaking Thor. What's wrong with you? Oh, <laughs> and she's I, like, huh? <laughs> I love it. I, that's, oh, yes. Like there is something about the Latina mama. Like there's just something about <laughs> that, Definitely. like. 
And same thing. I'm, I'm an only child. So like it, it, you know, I was everything she would do anything, but yeah. Oh my gosh. You, you gotta love, you gotta love the Latina mama. So <laughs> absolutely. Uh, last question for you. So you are with another fiery Latina. So yeah. <laughs> is, is like, do you have moments where you're like, you have that when you get angry, <laughs> when you get angry, there's a special Latina anger. Fire, would, you, yeah. would you agree? Yes. Fire. Would Absolutely. You Absolutely. <laughs> How do you calm yeah. down? Cause I, sometimes when I get into that <laughs> and I'm a, I'm a pretty green, I am gringa, but I get fiery and it's like when I'm in that, that state, what do you do? Yeah. We just kind of, oh, I, I really just, we just kind of have our own space. Really. Yeah. That's really what we do. Um, you know, cause we have the kids and whatnot. And, you know, with the kids around with, in our fiery tempers, we're just like, ah, you know, like what, what, what they call it? What's it called? Um, from Hercules, Hades. Is it, is it Hades? The one with the, with the fire that would uh-huh. go up in flames and he would calm down. That's exactly, that's the image. It's, it's, it's flames. And then whew, and the kids, Hey, and I'm like, oh, Hey, <laughs> Hey, everything is fine. What is it kiddo? <laughs> You know, because they're also fiery Latinos and, uh-huh. and we're going to be dealing with those Latino fires when they're a little bit older. So oh, we have yeah. to ooh, control our Latina fire. <laughs> right. <laughs> oh, my gosh. It's nice to have someone else to like be able to to understand it because I, 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 I feel so bad because Brandy is so mellow. Like she's so calm. She's so mellow. And like something can just like. And I'm like, <sighs> and then I don't, I don't really know. It's usually me too. Yeah. It's usually me too. It, and I'm yeah. like, ah, oh, oh, what do I do with this fire? Yeah. Like, that's why. Yeah. You know, I wish I could, can I be a character? Just like, can I be a character uh, in your next book? Can I be a fiery character? Next- can I fire? <laughs> can I shoot fire? But just like we have that fiery anger we also have that passionate love yes oh you know yeah. what I mean that uh-huh. devotion to our significant other uh-huh. and the way we want to just shower them with all of this just I, I, there's no other word just but just love just it's just I want to give yeah. you all of this passion love anything yes. you want baby anything yes <laughs> so, totally so yeah I, that's like you know she's the same with me so yeah it's kind of like it's 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 great it's perfect. you you get both yeah you exactly you get, it's, you a, get, it's a good level though yes you know yeah because it's it's the balance right because you have that that heat that balance. crazy heat but you also have the crazy love so yeah the crazy love. yeah absolutely <laughs> well thank you so much for your time this was so much fun I had a lot awesome. of fun yes it was a lot of fun and uh you can find my up-and-coming book which is uh on the other side lies the truth. It's another crime fiction thriller, but I decided to m- give a twist of paranormal. I'm also bringing to life an old case, uh, which is called the New Bedford, Massachusetts um, Highway Killer, and uh, that it, that was a real that was a real killer. He he killed between 1988 and 1989 uh, about nine uh, sex workers and left their bodies on the side of the highway. Mm-hmm. Um, so yeah, but that case is actually still cold. All of those nine women have not received the justice that they deserve uh, because the three sus- there was two or three suspects that they had uh, died. One by suicide, another by uh, suspicious circumstances or something. Um, so I decided to take that case and integrate it into my second book with the paranormal twist. I, I put something else in there. There's more information on the website about it. Um, and, and that's just what I, it's just what I like to do. Whenever I'm writing a big book, I want to integrate it with some kind of cold case or some kind of information where at the end of the book, I can give you the names of the real victims and, you know, where to go if there's any information you might know, any, any you know, any way you want to help and stuff like that. So that's coming up. Yeah. And uh, you can find that, you can find the effects of Hernerium on Barnes and Noble as a paperback and in Amazon as an ebook. <laughs> uh, could 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 I have you say uh, go forth and be magical? And could I have you do it in both English and Spanish? If you could be, if you could translate that, I don't know if, if let me think. 
So I don't know how, I wouldn't know how to translate that in okay, Spanish. That's fine. That, that's ven, ven adelante and se magico. I think it's that. I'll that's, try it. Okay. Okay. All right. Uh, go forth and be magical. Ve en adelante y se magico. Thank you.